Hello, welcome to the 1.2a video. Today we're going to talk about the first three standards in 1.2. So those are to how to make and interpret a dot plot and a stem plot of quantitative data and how to describe the overall pattern of a distribution and identify any major departures. So to do this, let's look at this first example problem. Here we have um, 16 brands of frozen pizza and the number of calories per serving from each of these. So you can see we have them listed out here. So making a dot plot is quite easy. You're gonna make a number line and you're going to count by the same scale. Make sure you label what the uh, variable is that you're displaying. In this case, it's a quantitative variable because it's measuring the number of calories. And then you simply put a dot for each pizza. So 340, we would put a dot above 340. And you can see there's another 340. That's why there's a second dot. And there's another 340. That's why there is the third dot. So making a dot plot is quite simple. Uh, this, what I really wanna focus on is how to describe the distribution. <clears throat> uh, and remember a distribution, it shows the values that are being taken and the number of times takes that value. So for instance, 360, there are two pizzas that have the value of 360 calories. So to describe this distribution, you're gonna to wanna to remember your socks is what we say. So socks stands for shape, outliers, center, and spread. Just a helpful way to remember that. So the shape of the distribution, you're gonna, you're gonna say two things, really. You're gonna say how many modes there are, and by modes, I mean how many peaks. So you can look at this one, and it looks like there is one overall peak here. You could maybe get away with saying there are two peaks because there are three here and three here. So there's not a perfect one size fit all, fits all answer. I said this is unimodal because there seems to be one peak. And then I said it is roughly symmetric. It's roughly symmetric because if you cut it in half and fold it on itself, it matches up pretty close. You're never gonna, well, you most likely won't have many distributions that are perfectly symmetric. So we're always gonna say they're roughly symmetric. And then just make a note of where most of that is. It mostly is between 310 and 360. That's where most of the pizza is. <clears throat> Next, describe the center. So shape, center, the middle value. Since there's 16 pizzas, just count eight and it will be uh, the middle. So the average of those two, which would be 330, is the middle of this or the center of this distribution. The range or your spread, our measure of spread is gonna be the range for now. And that is just, what's the smallest value? What's the largest value? So it goes from 260 to 380. <clears throat> so the difference between 380 and 260 is the length of the range. Finally, make a note of any outliers. Outliers are pizzas that are different uh, from the overall pattern. So in this case, it looks like 260 is pretty low relative to the rest of the graph. So 260, I would say, is most likely an outlier. But I will show you a specific way in the future of how to identify, yes, it is an outlier, or no, it's not an outlier. As of now, just make a note of which ones appear to be outliers. So describing shape is the key here. And here's a couple of, of things to make a note about for describing shape. Here are three different distributions. This one here, as you can see, if you cut it in the middle and fold it over on its half, it would look to be roughly symmetric. So that's why we call that roughly symmetric. This one is skewed left because you can see that there is a tail being stretched out to the left. Whichever way the tail is stretching is the way it is skewed. In this case, there are two higher ones that make a tail stretch out to the right. So that's why this one we would say is skewed to the right. Um, the second thing about shape is unimodal means there's one peak. Bimodal means there are two peaks. Multimodal means there's three or more peaks. And then uniform, it is flat across the top or relatively flat across the top. So now let's look at um, the, the next standard, how to compare two distributions using dot plots specifically. We'll talk about stem plots and histograms next um, video. 
So here we have two graphs, two dot plots, that are showing the household sizes from 50 random families in South Africa and 50 randomly selected families in the United Kingdom. So they want us to compare the household sizes from these distributions. So the first thing we need to do is describe socks for each distribution. South Africa. It appears to be unimodal. I see one overall peak and then these points over here make it skewed to the right because the tail is stretching out to the right. Are there any outliers? I would say yes, there's definitely a high outlier at 26. What's the middle? The middle I would count to 25. And you can see that the middle of this distribution is at six people. So the middle is important or the center is important because it tells you the typical household size. So typically their household size is around six in South Africa. And then finally, the range, the range goes from uh, three up to 26 people. So it has a range of 23, uh, but it goes from the minimum to the maximum. Now let's compare the United Kingdom. United Kingdom, the shape is roughly symmetric. There's no tail being stretched out either way. And it is definitely unimodal. You can see that one peak. There appear to be no outliers. The midpoint or the middle is going to be, count to 25, it's going to be in this area here. So it is four people and the range goes from two to six people. So it has a range of four. So the key here is they want us to compare these distributions. We know all the facts or the information that we need about each. <clears throat> now, what are some noticeable differences? I want to show you my terminology because it's going to be really important for you to use it. I want you to compare each of these, the shapes. So they're different. South Africa appears to be skewed right, while the United Kingdom is roughly symmetric, but both are unimodal. <clears throat> it's an important thing to make a note of. Next, we compare uh, their centers. So the center was six people in South Africa versus four people in the United Kingdom. What does that mean? It means household sizes in South Africa tend to be or are typically larger. Next, let's compare their, their uh, spread. The spread of South Africa was 23 versus the spread in the United Kingdom was only four. So you can see that this distribution is much more spread out, which means you need to draw this conclusion that the UK households are consistently smaller. They're more consistent because the range is only four. You're more likely to get a value between two and six in UK than you are in South Africa. So you need to make sure you're using these types of words. South African household sizes vary more. There's more variation in that distribution. And then finally, make a note that there are um, no outliers in the United Kingdom, but there are possibly two high outliers, definitely one high outlier in South Africa.